again, Grapple Gages, and welcome once more to the Corn Exchange here in Bedford. Another freestyle wrestling session, starting with a catchweight contest between Brian Maxine on the left, who else, of Ellesmere Port Cheshire, versus Reg Trude, quieter, slightly unobtrusive, uh, heavy middleweight, 13 stone 8. Brian Maxine, of course, the British middleweight title holder. And now he's, yes, he was telling me in the dressing room earlier this evening that he has ear trouble at right ear, so he now sports a skull cap. Skull cap or no, he's got six five-minute rounds to go through, two falls to decide against a much heavier man. Maxine at 12 stone three, Red Shrewd at 13 stone eight. I don't think his opponent, Reg Trude, likes it too much. But the referee says okay. And Tony Mancelli, the referee, saying wait for the bell if you don't mind. So Maxine now in the dark purple trunks, purple socks, and purple skull cap with gold all the way around it against Red Trude of Kensington, London. We haven't seen Maxine in the ring for quite some time on television. This has been abroad quite a bit. Out of it quite easily into a full Nelson by both. Through the one that's holding it. <laughs> Nicely out by True. Takes the whip before it's delivered. Goes against it. Or rather, with it to save the whip. Maxine took the whip. Still the same old confident Maxine. The only difference is the sculpture. Full Japanese stranglehold to the British middleweight title holder. And this catchweight contest. Pretty good crowd here at the Corn Exchange Bedford this evening. Most of whom, in fact nearly all of whom, are for Red True in this part. Maxine's grown his hair quite a bit too since we last saw him on the television. Cap, partly to help keep it in position, although he swears he has a bad ear. Inside the ear, not a cauliflower trouble. saying, although I have the advantage, I'll let you go, just shake hands on it, but Trude thinks he may have a 
counter here. No. One minute to go in this first round of six. Two falls to the side this back. Undress it. Oh, it must be rough on the nose. Three seconds to go. Red Shrewd, the man from Kensington, London, 13 stone 8, who uh, got over three fractured ribs in the ring once and came back two weeks later which I thought was remarkable Second up, round, two. round two five rounds to go two falls to decide this one Maxine the British middleweight champion versus Red Trude who's never held a title of any sort my knowledge had several years amateur experience before turning pro in the early 60s but this evening has a distinct weight advantage of one stone five pounds his opponents back to the ref makes one wonder slightly what the right hand is doing now it's okay of course because the referee is right there The knuckles mostly use of the knuckles into the eyebrow area. Really good one, just a little bit low, high chest there. And Tony Mansell is going to have just a little bit to say about that, still privately.
for a reason with a skull cap. So that right here from the treatment. Well, Red Shrew's got a minute to get to deliver this. Turn by True. just before the bell. Brian Maxim, the sex amateur and professional boxer. Ellesmere Port Cheshire, former British world weight title holder and middleweight title holder, but now merely the middleweight champion of Great Britain. Round three, four rounds to go, two falls to decide this one, Maxine versus True. It's Maxine in the skull cap. And the dark purple trunks. True, a little bit worried about that left knee. He didn't admit there was anything wrong with it to me before. He, he showed me it was just a protective bandage for a little trouble he'd had a week or two ago in the ring. But nothing to worry, he said. But already I think he's worried about it. Second round was a really hot posting. Moved the ring right across the floor. It's a folding press to Trude. He's got the hands held. Just under a minute and a half into the third round. And the first ball to Red Trude. Second round, four. Three rounds to go. in the light trunks and white knee bandage leading Brian Maxine the British middleweight champion by one fall and oh good mayor there Ernie tried the second but this time Maxine's left fist came in and Tony Mancelli saw it No public warning, he wasn't quite convinced it was a clinch fist, an actual punch. But highly suspicious of it. Just a little unsighted, one suspects, otherwise the public warning would have been there. They leave the loose of the ropes, and there it is, the public warning. I've seen again complaining, but it's a public warning just the same. Bear hug. Well, that's a typical vaccine move. Lift his man and deliver a 
forearm smash to the stomach on the way down. Perfectly legal. Reverse double knee hold, Maxine, it could be it. Yes, it is it, having weakened this man sufficiently to go in for a very simple reverse double knee hold. Just one minute, 42 seconds into the round. The equalizer to Brian Maxine and Francis P. Blake are master of ceremonies to announce it. Gentlemen, round four, an equalizing call to Brian Maxine. Just two rounds to go, now one fall each, and Maxine looking a little bit happier, but Red Trude not quite so happy. That bandaged left knee obviously worrying him quite a bit now. Seconds talking about it at this moment. He'll have to come out now. Round five, two to go, one fall each. And Trude, I think, in quite a bit of trouble here. The crowd a little bit annoyed about Maxine's headgear, the skull cap. The referee Mancelli assures me that most wrestlers used to wear them when they had ear trouble a few years back. He says this one's a little fancy. the crowd looking anxiously hoping that Fred Schroeder will get up because that's the one they want here. Oh no, they'll never stand that. Nor will the referee. Won't even take that, Tony Mancelli. And a little too late for that punch. He's just about to be delivered. And that's Red Shoe looks up at the referee and says, Can I ever try it? And Tony Mancelli says, No, eventually. But he let it go on for quite a bit. And Maxine now not only has ear trouble, he's got throat trouble along with it. But the skull cap doesn't go quite onto the spot, I don't think. Brian Maxine, one of his other pastimes, apart from being thrown around the ring here, is uh, a guitarist, of course, and singer. There's a lot of cabaret work, so that won't uh, make him too happy if it affects the vocal chords. Maxine, incidentally, has just made the new LP. Not allowed to continue that anymore, that soaring motion. And here am I just about to plug Brian Maxine's new LP, and he comes over and kicks me in the face. Gratitude. Just a minute left in this fifth round. And 
And red shirt, right eye trouble there. He's getting close at the moment. from long distance. <laughs> 15 seconds to go in this round. And a definite punch, that first one. And did Mansali see it? Again, very suspicious, but no proof, so he can't deliver a public warning. Red Fruit's right eye seems to be okay now. He had it closed for quite a time during that part. I'm not sure he's worried about it still or not. Seems to be okay at the moment. So, one round to go. One fall each. And, and one public warning against Maxime. The only reason for that is that Tony Mansali only caught him once. Well, he went with it okay, but he went a little too far with it. Heck of a place to land, small to the back there. And true doing well now. Especially with the butts for this time. Doesn't have too much effect on the skull cap. Oh, he did that time. A uh, good drop. Oh, a beauty. Right on the jaw, left hand side of the jaw there. Two got it. Six. Eight. And Maxine must have been working so pressure to finish this off surely over the top of the folding press. Easy. Very easily when it came. That's for a couple of minutes gone in round six. The winner to Brian Maxine by two to one. the main part of the evening's tournament a mid heavyweight contest honey boy zimba 14-6 bob kirkwood at only just half a pound difference so no weight differences here at all to worry about honey boy zimba the shorter but the very powerful physique there from uh, sierra leone west africa bob kirkwood from portsmouth six fives one full The muscular Zimba showing off his muscles right from this tire by that lift. Looks so easy the way he lifted. 40 and a half stone of Kirk would just turn him away. Good. 
Oh, yes. Quick arm roll there. Referee Tony Mansully, much more interested look on his face in this part. Is, you can see some rustling coming here instead of the, uh, the inside moves, bend, rule bending. Arm lock to Kirkwood. Still holding up. It's a hell of a lot of arm to hold. from a great guy will help him get out of the arm knock, I doubt it. He's going to go right over the top. He's halfway to the head scissors, the flyer. That does him no good. Right over the top this time and clear out of it. But not for too long. The head scissors again by Kirkwood. No. Just as he's made his escape. No. Starting very slowly, as uh, the heavier boys usually do, especially when there's a one four contest. Kirkwood. Stamina being used up by Zimbabwe. Kirkwood obviously doing this on purpose, trying to pace himself, but the sweat coming off Zimba's brow a great deal more than Kirkwood's at the moment. The touch hole a little difficult to make use of when you have your own arm in a backhand. Kirkwood's just feet just coming up behind Zimba's knees on the left to prevent himself going on. Halfway out, but not completely. Bridging it neatly and so neatly that Kirkwood gives up on that. For Kirkwood to go into a double finger interlock with this man, a lot of nerve to try that because a very powerful ball. Just got a minute. Kirkwood coming on the inside. Half a minute now in this first round of six. Zimba always gives the impression that he looks as though he's taking it very easy. Another lazy look about his moves. He seems to be very slow in the early part of this bout. Kirkwood, whose uh, ambition has always been a crack at Mike Marino's uh, British mid heavyweight title. Well, he's in the weight class, all right, but he's never had a go at actually the title. He's taken on Marino, but never beaten him, to my knowledge. Certainly not on television. 
second all in, round two. Round two, five to go, and remember, one fall to decide this mid-heavyweight contest between Honey Boy Zimba and Bob Kirkwood. Zimba from uh, Sierra Leone, West Africa. Both trying exactly the same hold. Kirkwood holding on to it, although he was thrown. Side head locked by both of them, reversed. And still Zimba throws him, but still Kirkwood holding on. Both doing an identical move. They're agreeing, I think, finally to quit that one. Nobody getting anywhere with it. Again, Kirkwood speed, getting that leg grab in before Zimba even moves or starts to move out of the way. by the leg, but Kirkwood still doesn't release. The double-handed was taken. Sudden move to the head mayor, but uh, Kirkwood gets up from it very easily. Again, that leg grab comes in first, and the jump step over to to Kirkwood. Sure, that right shoulder blade's way off the canvas. He's trying to hold Zimba, and now this is where that powerful arm comes in handy. Surprise under them, the double interlock. Agreeing again to go for that double interlock. I'm surprised that Kirkwood does it. But he gets the back down the front of a nice forward leg trick. And a good one for climb attempt, but Zimba on the way over caught Kirkwood's right leg. Very, very nice. If he hadn't, he would have been clear out of the ring. Zimba trying the single leg Boston. He's going to get his left leg over if he can. To really put me on the pressure. A minute to go. The body scissors now to Kirkwood. Send the still trying to show the cross there. Half a minute. Time he was ready for it. Nice, nice escape there by Kirkwood. Right on the bell of round two. Yeah, 
has a good sporting bout anyway so far. Honey Boy Zimba has been over here for about 13 years now. He's a great bodybuilder. He uh, knew about his bodybuilding even before coming to the United Kingdom. He had two years as an amateur at heavy middleweight before turning pro in 1960. Second down the ring, round three. Round three, four rounds to go. One fall to decide this mid-heavyweight contest. Zimba versus Kirkwood. Figure four leg lock. Attempt by Kirkwood, leaving his arms free if he can to go up to the top. And that's why Zimba's got his arms stretched forward. Unreachable. <laughs> and finally got the arms. There's the double arm. Forced Zimba to pull those arms back a fraction, just enough for Kirkwood to reach them. And the figure four, leg lock still on. Kirkwood's right leg holding it on, and the double arm as well. And the power of Zimba forces him to release, and he gives up the hole altogether. Kirkwood followed up that head mare very quickly there, so I had very neat. Doesn't waste any time at all. And it's his speed that's worrying him more than anything. And that's pretty speedy too, that knee drop. We're worried too much about no, that. No. Saw it coming. Kirk would agree to the double finger into lock, and he shouldn't have. <laughs> it's 
and we're looking as though he can come back in that position any time he likes. Well, Kirk would be happy in the knowledge if only he knew. He's only got about eight seconds left. Double arm now. No, it's too late for either of them. Kirkwood's expression as the bell went, no doubt you saw it there. I don't know whether it was relief or disappointment when the bell went. Looks a bit disappointed, but I don't think he would have got too far with that double arm against this man. Anyway, he's doing pretty well. Second out of the ring, round four. Three rounds to go, one fall to decide this. Zimber v. Kirkwood. Kirkwood's done a lot of attacking first. I think most of the attacking moves have been by Kirkwood. It's the counter moves, mostly by Zimba. Left knee, stroke to the back of the neck. The double handed face power of the chin. check but Zimba up quickly he goes for those and a flying butt oh that was a beauty now Crook would be considerably weakened following that and that backdrop as well knee drop and he, oh Zimba really going now using all the strength holes he knows and another knee drop face down Very quick slam indeed, and the reverse double knee hold finishes Kirkwood for good and all, but a valiant effort he put up for three rounds and a bit anyway. Just a couple of minutes into round four, the, by the only four. Gentlemen, round four, the winner, honey, by Zimba. And round for the loser. Now, gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a middle heavyweight contest. Six rounds, five minutes each round, one fall, one submission, or one KO to decide the winner. In the red corner,